Hi everyone, I'm Lila Aldar and a high school student. I'm just one of the many that is worried for the future. Obviously, with all the application for university and Parcoursup, which is currently going on, and of course, for our planet. I would like to start off with an analogy, the analogy of a frog. It consists of basically putting a frog in boiling water and it will jump out immediately. But if you put this frog in cold water and boil it gradually, this, will, this frog will actually get used to the temperature and will die boiled. This, for me, is a perfect representation of what we're doing, of what we're letting happen. You might tell me, isn't this a bit extreme? Is it though? It is a bothersome truth, but it is the direction we are taking. And I say we, as it is a problem that concerns us all. We currently have a problem. A plastic continent actually exists. It's six times the size of France and is situated next to the North American coast. That is one problem over thousands, millions. Last week, the biggest, one of the biggest icebergs, size of half of Corsica, named A76, has been detached. And this is only the beginning. Ice from land and sea are melting due to increase of temperature and CO2 emissions. This melting creates a disruption of temperatures as less surface is whiter, which would have reverberate the sun's rays. This means that a larger surface is darker and therefore absorbs incoming rays. This increases temperature rising, water rising, climatic disaster, destructions of ecosystem. It is just a vicious cycle of disasters. We have to realize that we need to act now, as we are at a point in time when we can still make a difference. Indeed, by 2030, according to scientists, we will reach a point of no return when we can no longer keep the global average of rising temperature below 2 degrees. Out of 52 million possible climate future, carbon neutrality must be reached by that time, or we won't have a healthy environment. We are not only fighting for our planet, but also for our survival, as the Earth will survive with or without us. And this is why we should act. COVID-19 killed many, and I wish truly my condolences to all who have lost someone during this time. However, it has also allowed positive change, development of new technologies like the vaccines based on RN, which was never done before at this scale. This opens up for new opportunities, for new ways in medicine, but this is also the case for biology and the digital world. Unexpectedly, COVID-19 is also a message of hope. It has shown how we can all collaborate as a united front, how borders are not important when facing a pandemic. Amazing accomplishments have been achieved as a society, a community, a nation, an entire world. This pandemic has shown us that we can do the impossible. I mean, seriously, we would have thought that, who would have thought that we would be close to closing everything? Nobody. I am first to say that if someone would have told me that three years ago, I would have laughed so hard. The impossible is possible, as long as we are willing and putting in the effort. COVID-19 hasn't only shown us that we can do great things as a community, but also how beautiful our environment is. We could hear birds in big cities, see animals we wouldn't normally. The air was better and fresher. I mean, we could breathe. How is that normal to say in astonishment? All of that because we stopped cars, planes, manufacturers and reduced emissions and many more. This opened up our eyes on how we should live, minus of course the stress, restrictions and the virus. Sadly, COVID-19 isn't enough. We have to continue to work forward for a greener world. Indeed, emissions weren't actually reduced by COVID-19, but actually worsened as we went back to our old capitalist economy and worsen it as if we had to compensate for the so-called wasted time. We must reinvent our world, our economy. This could start by reimagining capitalism, as for now, clean companies have to compete with heavily subsidized companies that destroy our health and degrade our environment. The easy way is not the brighter. But for example, with confinement, ecology has resurfaced, as seen with the social movements, actions, reactions, to how better it was when we could walk freely because there weren't any cars, for example. We have seen how slow change, uh, we have seen a slow change in politics and governments as more green parties have been elected in regional elections and every program has now included ecology. 
this might be a trend just to follow the public opinion, but the fact that it is there is big and that was more predominant during COVID up until now. New green creative projects have been developed as a way to boost the economy after COVID, such, in, such as the new types of electric vehicles or, for example, new ways to make homes more efficient energetically. These ideas are not new, but are being improved and put into place more and more. COVID-19 is not the cure-all, but it is a step that we should not discredit and it is an important one. I am no genius. And I sadly don't have the miraculous solution to the problem that represents climate change. But I do believe this. I believe that a consequent change is possible as ecological opportunities are increasing and bouncing from this pandemic has allowed many of these opportunities. We have to, as a collective, to make a change. We must bounce forward and not back.